this is the build OGM call for Tuesday, February 8th, 2022. Um, thank you. And um, so yeah, podcast, et cetera. And um, I thought um, the thing that was on my mind for build OGM what came out of yesterday's Free Jerry's Brain call, which was, okay, okay, okay. It feels like we made some steps toward um, both maybe freeing my brain and getting some, the beginnings of a rhythm around um, structuring some projects and building tiles and things like that, and maybe being overly optimistic. Um, and I have, uh, I have a pioneer session of Pick Jerry's Brain this afternoon with Wendy, just, just gratis uh, to sort of test the thing out and see what it's like. And I think our question is going to be, how does the, how does the mosaic fit her tapestry idea? And how might those be complementary? And what does that mean? How you know how would a tapestry be used, uh, et cetera, et cetera? So, um, so I was thinking we would explore that space a bit, if that's interesting to you, Pete. And if you had, and Pete, if you had agenda items you were thinking we would touch, I would love to know. Um, I yeah, I've got one agenda item, which is uh, uh, archiving OGM forum. Um, <laughs> I've been I've been mentioning that it's going to happen, but I wanted to reaffirm that it's going to happen. It has to happen soon. Um, I have no, I have no known yeah. objections to it and might as well. I, should I, um, should I send an email to the list? Sure. Saying it's going to happen the next day or two or. I think that's you fine. Put it in the yeah, but not everybody reads that. So. We know readership was astonishing, right? <laughs> um, I got a decent number of subscribers, so I was, I was very pleased. But cool, good one, I guess. Uh, and, and congrats too. That's really lovely. Yeah. Um, but that means we have to get another issue out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's good because we've got the Bentley front end and stuff like that. Um, So, and um, I think, there we go. And thanks for helping me figure out how to turn that on and off. Um, so now that we, and um, I don't think we have a special name for Bentley's. Uh, it needs a name. It needs a name. We need a, we need a, a memorable in, name. Unless. Unless we just um, call it Meme Brain 2? Keep, yeah. Or something like Son of Meme Brain? Or Meme Brain. Um, Bride of X Meme Brain? Or, yeah, for. Um, we could give it a name the, like the, the Culture the Series. Brain. <laughs> you know, I thought I, I thought I would love you, but then realized <laughs> that could be the name of the project. Um, meme Brainy Mc, Meme Brain Face. Or, or McBrain, Mc, McBrain Face. Or the, the mean brain experience. Actually, McBrain face is good because that's kind of the territory we're in, right? That's almost yeah. exactly good. Okay, for now it's McBrain face. <laughs> I was wondering how these names get picked. You know, it's done in dark rooms, usually by men smoking cigars, but in this case, <laughs> it's in a well-lit Zoom. Um, okay, that, that, that sounds good. So, so partly, I'm, I'm interested in a Pete style project plan, I think, for forward progress on that in maybe a couple directions. Um, one of them, so the, there's several different things that, that occur to me, which is uh, what does the, what does a writable replacement brain look, uh, effort look like? Like what, what would it take to get there? And that feels like the difficult, that feels like the, the, the longer term thing. Um, in the shorter term, I think there's two others that jumped in my mind and I'd love to brainstorm what other sort of, without like trying to build a long list, but there's two that, that jumped in my mind. One is, uh, for example, uh, a pick Jerry's brain scenario like, um, hey, I'm going to do a consult with somebody and I'm going to use this brain to do the demo of what's going on. And at the end, I would like to have, for example, uh, a simple output of all the thoughts we clicked on or maybe even let them pick which thoughts to remember along the way, but they probably won't. I mean, even just a simple log of, of what we touched would be great and seems like a simple thing to, to output. Um, but to think through um, 
the uh, McBrain face interface, <laughs> you know what? A good project name brings a smile to your face. So, so there we are. I think mission accomplished. So um, the the and, and it could be Brainy McBrain face to really be complete, right, Pete? Yep. Okay. So I think I think that's the the way to go here. Um, which then gets long to say. So I might just have to say McBrain face as like the shorthand, and we're agreed on that. Good. Um, so so another path is like what helps make uh, conversations across this new interface uh, more useful to clients and to demo. And that might mean adding features like notes fields and a couple other things. Uh, then a third one is uh, useful to Mark Trexler, like what would make this useful in addition to the microsite stuff that you've written for Mark? Like how does this fit with microsites, if at all? Um, does Mark, is Mark interested in using this in some way? Is this an exploration for him? What features would he need to make that work, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then a last one that I had in my head was um, uh, to basically prep the, the prep a new brain for experimentation. The thing I said earlier, you know, the reason I was asking uh, Bentley to 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 write this openly and and you know make it so that other people could come in and play with it and do a alternate UX, uh, other sorts of, of things like that. So and and I don't know how overlappy these different goals are and pete and stacy if you have other goals that you can think of that we, we should add to that list but is that a reasonable list it, it's a it's a good list the, the one i would add is that it's um uh comfortable for you to use during a, a the brain tour mm -hmm. and ideally is as comfortable as using the brain itself even better would be even better than the brain itself. Like it's exactly. Or smoother over. Um, and and I have to say that's the one I would do next. Well, and one that occurs to me all of a sudden in a strange way, which may not be solved, which which this may not solve at all, is the resolution problem we were having with all of the virtual cams to get it to show up readably behind me. If this solves the yeah, visibility it's... problem which it won't because it's text of the same rough size yeah right and text is text is text it's not it has nothing to do with the brain app it has to do with text making through the the munging yeah okay um and the one of making it useful in a consult is the easiest of these i think yeah that's the that's my my one that's the pick Jerry's brain one uh I, you know, that one actually is a good example of it's kind of hard. Um, mm -hmm. uh, let me type the thing that I wanted to type. Mm -hmm. um, so, so the, the weird thing about the, so the picture is brain one is, um, so I think you need the other one first. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it needs to be comfortable to use and it's not quite yet. Um, but then keeping track of what nodes got clicked is like a new, an, a new feature. Um, you can do it. It's a new feature and it, it can be done in, in a number of different ways. And you can either do, I don't know, it, it, it requires more experimentation, kind mm -hmm. of. It, it, it's a, it requires architectural development as well as just a feature thing. So right. a really clever thing about um, McBrainface where that, that, um, that Bentley did is he's like, okay, so Mean Brain looks really ugly right now, and I think I can make it pretty. And it's a fairly straight, you know, mapping. It's, it's fairly... Not, not to take anything away from his uh, his design and development because he did some clever stuff, but it's there wasn't any architectural changes mm -hmm. that he had made. He was right? benefiting so, from the pass through cache, the read through cache architecture, and a couple other things that Mean Brain already does. Yeah, and he could just depend on those things being there, and then mm -hmm. he didn't have to invent anything new. Really, I guess you know some of the like the, the ways that he drew drew stuff on the screen, and there were some architectural choices there, mm -hmm. but. But, 
been working on the architecture for, I don't know, um, either uh, as a consultant, I would worry that I would do it cheap and dirty way. And then the client would ask, ask for the next, you know, the next increment on that. And it's like, okay, well, I, I chose the cheap and dirty way and it's not extensible. And so right. we have to redo all the work I just did. Right. Um, or you can pre-do all of that work. You can do a couple architectural spikes to kind of get going in the right direction and go, okay, I think this is the one that's going to have legs. But then you've, you've blown a bunch of you know, hours, right. like doing work that may not pay off or you know the client might not want to pay for it ultimately because they'll go okay well that was an interesting spike I'm, i don't care about the rest you know i don't care about the stuff that you could have done so it's a it's a weird it's it's an easy feature to say and it's got kind of potentially potential architectural considerations that make it more expensive than it seems like it should be or risky and expense or risk depending on which which one you want to trade on. Mm -hmm. um, and, and apropos what you're just saying right now, the four different reasons that I put in the chat feel to me like tier one thoughts <clears throat> that fit inside the larger OGM, build OGM project map, which is the mosaic and the larger goals of shared memory and all that, which then brings in an architectural consideration like how do we separate apps from this, the healthy layer of open linked connected data, which is not living inside of Postgres SQL, but rather on IPFS or on some other, some other distributed infrastructure, if indeed that's a good path to go. I mean, HTML, uh, piece, the pieces that compose any web page do not live inside of IPFS. They live on servers around the world, not that redundantly. And DNS is a not very redundant, it's a distributed, but not very redundant kind of service. It's not, well, I'm actually not sure how to describe that for DNS specifically. Um, but there is like one DNS engine. It's not content addressability. It's a it's its own very specific mechanism. So how do we design the meta project so that we're moving toward uh, not just something that's a nice, you know, a replacement for the brain and and maybe an experimentation platform for touching other other products, but rather the more toward the vision of some environment that allows us to have a variety of tools looking on distributed reliable data. And is that, how do we, how do we architect a path to explore that? That's partly, that's sort of the, if I bump out of these projects, that's the next layer of projects I think I see. Does that make sense? Yeah. Would you do it that way? Would you do it a different way? And do you, do you agree on where I'm aiming? Um, I, I don't disagree. <laughs> okay. Um, part of, um, part of like, we're not, we're not sure exactly where to aim. So, so, you know, part of it is just, I don't know. It's, it's the, the cool thing about, um, McBrainface that Bentley did was he saw a, 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 sh a short, a low risk hop that had a, a, a high return. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's a that's a really sweet thing to do. Um, and I think part of the way that we um, this again, I don't know if this is this this sounds weird to me thinking about it. Um, the the way that we got to be able to take that short um, uh, you know low cost low risk, high reward step is actually just by waiting. Um, is by what? Waiting. Uh-huh. Um, so we could have, we could have spent more resources doing affirmative experiments, kind of, kind of in the, the, the realm of the experiments we've got in chat. Um, but they, it would have been costly to do that, you know, relatively costly, not super costly. Yeah, not super costly. Um, but it would have taken like um, investment resources to kind of experiment around. And then, you know, we would have done four experiments and gotten one good one or something like that. Right. Um, instead, what we did is we just waited for six months or 12 months or whatever. And, you know, the discussion you and Bentley had was backgrounded by a bunch of other discussions that we kind of just had in, in the background. They didn't, they didn't feel like they cost anything really. Right. Um, and then, 
you know, the stars align and it's like, hey, I could do this quick hack and it would be super, super fruitful. So we just waited for that to happen. I think if we waited again, we'd get another, you know, good, cheap, low risk, high reward thing to, to happen. Um, so waiting until someone has the initiative to propose something that smells right. And I, and well, I don't know, I, I mean, partly, um, partly long ago, I was like, how do we set up a dash? How do we set up a, a dashboard, a team dashboard of tiles so that somebody could walk in and say, oh, I'd like to do that. How do we then create funding that, you know, that is attractive to somebody to come in? Um, Jordan, uh, and I have, have like caught up with each other a bit and he still wants to go out and pitch for hey let's find somebody who's willing to pour 25 million dollars into the ecosystem and then figure out where that goes and i think in order to even begin to consider doing that we need to be able to show where we're aiming and how we're going about the process of, of, of building these things out and i think that that the dashboard and the tiles are one one mechanism for saying this is in fact how we get there um, and without pushing on that and without actually sort of actively going and trying to find some more resources to do it, I don't think we'll ever get there. I think we'll, I think the let's wait until, let's wait until somebody like rises and, and like, like eats the worm uh, in some sense is, is going to take, it seems, feels like forever. No, it'll take longer. Yeah. Yeah. But it's cheaper. It's totally cheaper. That's for sure. Um, but, but so, I'm happy to go pitch if there's a, a sort of something substantial that we can pitch and then and then act on, and which implies things like project plans and dashboards full of, of you know things and a bunch of open source code and a bunch of, like there's a whole lot of, of things that this means that I think we just sort of intuitively know. Yeah. Um, what, so what we've had instead of a dashboard is kind of, it's kind of like commander's intent. Um, uh, all of us kind of know where we want to go. We haven't really written down and we haven't really agreed on it, but, you know, um, Mark Antoine kind of had an idea. Stacy kind of had an idea. You had an idea. I had an idea. Um, Bentley's had an idea. Um, Mark Trexler, you know, Julian, everybody kind of knows there's, there's a goal out there and it's kind of fuzzy, right? Um, but, but there was enough intent and group understanding of how, you know, if what forward progress looked like that Bentley was able to like grab onto a chunk of it and go, right? Mm -hmm. um, so if, so yes, you could systematize that. Um, I mean, in this, in this method, if we're lucky, if we're really lucky, we'll get Turducken. If we're unlucky, we'll get Haggis. And I'm trying to get us like a really beautiful um, buffet. I'm trying to set set a buffet where other people show up and go like, oh, 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 I can I can bring some uh, pudding and it's going to be delicious and it fits over here. That's kind of where I'm trying to steer. Um, and and I, we won't be that lucky that often, I don't think, with uh, if we if we if we don't push this in some direction, if we don't guide it and structure it more. Is my thought. Yeah. Yeah, sort of, kind of. Um, and and I'm trying to think this through out loud in a way that fits um, the way you're working and the things that you would like to get done too, so that like the funding flows to you, and so that the pieces you're building fit into the larger mosaic, into Wendy's tapestry, into you know whatever. And I'll also say that. The flotilla calls you've been leading are the closest thing we've got to various entities showing up in the same conversation saying all right how do we fit like what what does it mean to interoperate um so you're kind of guiding that that yeah. piece of the work anyway as it stands right um i i think so I, I, you, you've got a good kind of hypothesis of how to like, you know, proactively kind of inter-architect, you know, into the future. Um, but, but I think the architecture we ended up, end up with might be different than we, I, 
I, I think it might be kind of over architecting up front because I don't know if that makes sense. Um, well, so so kind of what you're talking about is is doing is doing uh, architectural scaffolding essentially, um, uh, and that that's fine. Um, but I'm I'm not sure it's as useful as something else that we could do. So the architectural scaffolding is cool because it kind of sets up the ground for people to come in and fill in, you know, the, the bits and bobs. But I think what what there's a good chance what will happen is to get to get what we want, it'll become it'll be a different architecture. So the architectural scaffolding doesn't actually have a lot of return value to the people who come in and do the architecture. So a different thing to do, um, and a, a, a different thing to do, and I'm just brainstorming, I'm not sure if this is a better or worse thing, but it's a different thing. Um, a different thing to do is to do um, uh, the world of the future Apple video kind of thing. Um, a, vision, a vision, basically illustrative, illuminate, illustrate, yeah. mock up, prototype, a vision of some sort. Yeah. Um, and for that, you kind of work backwards, right? You, you can, you, you have enough fidelity in the demonstration that, um, that it looks like there's architecture behind it, but it's like a movie magic trick, right? There's actually no architecture there. It's right. just, you know, you, you know enough of the kind of the patterns of the future or whatever that you can fake the fact that there's architecture underneath it convincingly. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so, so starting from now and doing some work into the future, you could tile out, you know, some architectural scaffolding um, and then say, hey, folks, we've got enough scaffolding here that you could build architecture on top of it. A different, a different thing to do is just to make a vision mm -hmm. um, video um, and skip over the fact that there, that we don't actually have any architectural like underpinning and somebody's gonna have to come along and actually build architecture that gets us there. Um, but I think that's, it's kind of the same, same kind of effort that architectural scaffolding is, is work. It's, you know, not trivial work. Um, and, and we've also kind of like, if you call it, if you, if you think of it as architectural scaffolding, then it actually has to, to be real architecture. It actually has to hold together and you end up in little blind spots and you go, okay, well that didn't work. And the tiles don't quite fit together. So let's go back, rewind a little bit and go forward and make the tiles fit better. Um, you can skip over all of that and just get the vision thing and make it a higher fidelity vision um, with the same you know, amount of effort that you're kind of trying to do a good job of architecture. Um, uh, and I think that might be more productive, actually. That might be, so, so then saying to the world, um, you know, pick, pick uh, 20 people that you would kind of, you know, cold email and say, hey, here's our vision of the future. You know, if you're sending them an ar architectural scaffolding, the, what the, the architectural scaffolding mostly does is it gives you a vision into the future, right? It's like, okay, I see what you're doing here with these tiles. You're kind of drawing a picture of the future that's got this in it. Um, the other way, it's like, wow, this is a flashy vision and I get where you're going with this. And I can imagine that there's architecture you've kind of thought about um, and maybe you even have, but the vision is, I think, more compelling, more interesting. It, it would get people, it would, um, it baits the hook better. Um, it, it would get a better response and better brainstorming about the future, right? Right. Like, well, I wouldn't have done that in 3D. Actually, there's this cool 2D thing that you do on a table, you know, you get the, you, you get visioning energy coming back rather than architectural, you know, energy coming back. So this is a problematically intriguing path. Um, and I, I say that totally tongue in cheek, partly because, partly because, ah, this is funny, partly because I, for me, the tiles on a dashboard with people who are able to come in and pick tiles and move things forward feels to me like something that you and Jordan would be like thrilled with and let's be like hey if there's like project plans and there's people who can look up and see what you know where the pieces fit and all that and then on the other hand on the other hand I'm very aware that once you start doing that you start ironing down architectural bits sooner than you need you start you start you start looking down at the pieces that, at the tiles that you're building instead of looking up at the vision so in some sense you're saying 
uh, let's just go freestyle paint the mosaic. Yeah. Right. Instead, yeah. instead, instead of let's go make tiles and let's go like, like start um, shaping the tiles and figuring out what they're going to be made of and how they get glued to the background or whatever. <clears throat> you're saying, look, no, we, we need to actually go paint the mosaic. And, and I hadn't actually thought about a vision uh, video or map or a knowledge navigator equivalent uh, expression of what this thing is. And um, it would be a delight to do. And, and I think you can intuit that it appeals to me more than the tiles. <laughs> That's why this is ironically dangerous. Um, right? Am I, am well, I wrong here? I, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, my intuition had an intuition that that was true. I, you know, I, I think it's just a better, I think it's a better choice. The, and, and the, the observation I have, uh, a hard one observation I have is that you would think that getting a project kind of started having a project plan and stuff like that would, you know, make people like, would make uh, builders go, oh, wow, look, somebody's kind of already done the planning. All I have to do is pick this up and pour water into it and, and it's going to grow. I, there's this weird thing where, and this is, this is kind of um, a, a balance we do in, in flotilla, right? Um, the makers, makers are really, um, it's a, a, an ugly word to say, kind of, but makers are really insular, right? It's like when you, when you get a maker, they, they get passionate about their vision and it's really hard to transplant a vision into, into that, right? Um, you get all the juice from Vincent going, you know, I've got this idea for a trove thing and I'm going to freaking build it, you know, with whatever I can get my hands on, you know, and, you know, um, and as much as I love Trove and I, I love that Vincent loves Trove, it's not my deal, you know? So if somebody gave me proto Trove and said, Pete, this is, you know, this is the thing you should just build this, just pour water in it and go, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I'm proto not passionate about with it. The proto molecule. <laughs> because in that case, it's dangerous. Um, kind of a primordial soup thing. Yeah. Primordial but, thing. But I, I get what you're saying. So, so it's, it's more like um, uh, St. Zuberi, actually, uh, um, you know, don't talk about, you know, the, I forget what the don't part is, um, give them the, the, the flavor of the sea, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't have the quote in my brain, unfortunately, but uh, uh, yeah. I, I've, I've sure. got a good translation in, uh, in OGM Wiki, actually. Thank you, um, which I'm, which I think you'll find. So, while you're while you're looking for that thing, uh, two things. Let me just um, show that. I think maybe it's in a massive wiki somewhere, but I'm not sure it's an OGM wiki. So I've got I, the problem of too many massive wikis. Oh damn it! Okay, <laughs> so here, so the, the note taking I've been doing, um, basically, you know, two paths ahead: architectural scaffolding or creative vision, sense making environment, which I connected to Knowledge Navigator, which is under Tech Utopian Visions and Videos and Demos, which has a whole bunch of things, uh, including a sub thought called uh, "Very Useful Ponderings About the Future," et cetera, et cetera. But this includes like Cisco and AT and T trying to explain how to use the telephone. Uh, all of those kinds of things. There's a lovely, there's a really lovely history of people creating uh, compelling things that, you know, including the New York World's Fair, which ought to be connected here, uh, which was a, a mistaken, uh, it was a, definitely a utopian, um, oops, I gotta probably spell it right. Uh, probably Worlds is, there we go, 1939 New York World's Fair, that one. Uh, bink, bink. Um, so that's sort of in the two paths. And then I also did reasons to improve uh, Brainy McBrainface. Uh, and I, I typed in the things that I put in the chat. Um, but the vision thing, I'll just stop here. Um, even as we're sitting here talking, I can envision um, what the video looks like. Like my brain is yeah. starting. My brain is starting to narrate that video. Yeah. Yeah. 
so so in some kind of meta way the, the what you want is everybody super passionate about something right and if you're super passionate about you know knowledge navigator videos then that's a better use of your time than trying to make the mosaic well it is the mosaic but then trying to build the tiles oh, even better yeah I, I mean i mean the mosaic yeah, yeah, metaphor yeah. the you're mosaic totally right. metaphor lends itself really nicely here um, because are you coming at it from the tiles or from the mosaic? And I have not painted the mosaic and it's on my list of things to do to paint the mosaic, but it doesn't, I wasn't inspired by Knowledge Navigator as an, as an, as an example of what the mosaic might aspire to be. And once you said that, I'm like, oh crap, that's right. Huh. Um, which, which means the strategy might be well, like, I need to pay you guys and Bentley from the rut funds and then switch my attention to figuring out how to create the video. Uh, yeah. As, as a piece of building OGM next to picking Jerry's brain and all the other kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, that's, that, that that's, my, that's is, my, that's my conclusions from this conversation. Is more or less to a, a weave the world episode. Uh-huh. Right. It's it's maybe it's the uh, pilot episode, or it's maybe it's the prototype vision that illustrates why weaving the world exists. Yeah, and what it is, it's a, it is a, it is a holodeck vision of what weaving the world might look like in ten years. If that makes sense. I I read uh, I read this yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, my sort of thesis at Wharton was basically played off the Dyna book idea. Yeah. So, so then that was a reply to something like this. Um, which is a response to Ellen Kay's paper from the Progressive Foundation. <laughs> which, is, which looks like a kick-ass paper. <laughs> um, I'm adding some of these things. Cool. And uh, oops, I think my brain just crashed. No, it didn't. That's fine. Um, okay, so what does that mean? Um, I think that means we take it under advisement and, and go away and think about it. Yeah, um, but this is a lot of good stuff to, to think about. Uh, well, and huh. is it worth writing out this sort of question and sending it to certain key people? Like I'm thinking Mark Antoine, um, certain people that come at it with different perspectives a little bit just to get a conversation going. Sorry, say that again, Stacy. I was wondering if it's worth it to write this up as a question as far as the two paths and start a conversation with a few key people. The, the one that came to my mind was Mark Antoine, but again, I don't, you know, I, I'm only, I have a limited perspective, Yeah. but just to get some other ideas because you'll also see where the passion is. There may be two paths. Um, yes, and, and, and I don't think that means abandoning the other path. I think that just means no. sort of priorities and, and, and what we work on. Um, I, may, I, I may raise this also with Wendy um, this afternoon when I talk to her, because I think Wendy, I think Wendy'd be like, hmm, got this, like this totally makes sense. I was thinking that was going to come up later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's sort of inevitable at this point. And, and, and a thing I meant to say earlier, um, and 
Pete, it goes along with what you're saying and with other conversations that, that have been floating around this environment is that this is kind of how emerg emergence works. And this is like what I've been, what I think I've been trying to do with OGM is emergent leadership or management or whatever that is, where we're just looking to see who shows up and how it works, where the conversations take us and then nurturing, you know, the stuff that looks interesting as, in some ways, even if, even if just by calling them in and and ex, you know ex, exploding them and opening them up and inspecting them with the group and all that kind of thing, <clears throat> and 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 I love that. So I, I love that too. I the so so then the, the meta question is how how can you be a good emergence farmer? Um, and. And so it's not either or between scaffolding and vision. It's, you need both, right? Um, but but the thing I think I've kind of learned over the past year and a half or whatever is that it's 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 tempting to it's tempting to think that that scaffolding is is kind of like good enough or better or something like that. And there's a lot of self-determination and, and self, um, whatever you would call self-interested passion, um, uh, calling or something like that, um, that, that you have to factor in as if, if you're an emergence, you know, if you're farming for emergence, um, it, it turns out that people are really motivated by the things that they're passionate about and and that changes the way that you you farm and scaffolding is you know kind of okay but not as good as i i it, so throwing vision into you know a passionate vision into the mix that provides a lot of of direction forward part for yeah. you know and and informs where the scaffolding goes i mean uh, uh, um, this may not be a great metaphor but uh, these days they're figuring out how to make stuff out of mycelium and what you do is you build the mold you build a negative mold in the shape of the thing you need like i need to hold this printer in the box and then you pour some you, you basically spike it with some mycelium you let it grow and it grows into that shape and what the scaffolding tries to be is a mold for this larger thing. But if you don't have a nice vibrant picture of what the thing is, then you've got like scaffolding that kind of goes every which way <clears throat> and doesn't, doesn't function as shaping, but only functions to hold bits and pieces somewhere. Right. Yeah. Um, and we need to do some, some painting, shaping, illustrating, whatever, which is like really happy work. And and which and which I think might lead um, might be extremely useful for finding funding. Yeah, like extremely useful. You know, Mark Porat basically had a, a re his a red book. Mark Porat was the founder of General Magic. He had a red uh, a red book in which he had scribbled sort of visions of a little bit Dynabooky kind of thing, and I'm sure very much inspired by Dynabook and other kinds of visions and the Knowledge Navigator. And he basically got a tremendous amount of funding just from that little red notebook. Um, a small side note, total, total side note, but um, it turns out that Ziba, where I'm about to walk over, um, built the mock-ups that Porat holds up in the documentary about general magic, that the engineers at Ziba were involved in it, with, with general magic in the early days. They, you know, uh, the found, Saurabh knows Mark Porat and, and all those kinds of people. And they were, there, there's a little, a little bit of DNA uh, at Ziba in the, in the knowledge, in the, in the general magic thing. So I think back to our regular schedule program, which is almost over. I, I read a good article about artificial reefs, subway cars, artificial reefs. And I was thinking about sinking a ship to build a reef as well. Um, and, and it's, it's funny. So the headline is it didn't go as planned. Um, so you end up with when you're trying to do scaffolding. Yeah. I guess, you know, the, the early thing was, oh, I'll, we'll, we'll, you know, these cars would be great scaffolding. Turns out if you sink the stainless steel ones, you know, which were lighter on the tracks, stainless steel doesn't grow, um, uh, grow barnacles uh, and yeah. corals. Um, there was another one because um, it's stainless. Yeah. Damn it. Um, 
Why didn't they build so those things out of good it, old rust? It turns out I think military tanks um, are are good. Um, they've they they dumped a bunch of military tanks at the bottom of the English Channel, um, you know, and those make good reefs. Huh. They're a nice solid kind of thing. But if you dump them off the coast of Maryland, they just sink into the sediment, <laughs> and they're gone. And they disappear. They just get swallowed. So there's well, there's some so story about um, scaffolding and and so we've learned a lot about artificial reefs. Um, Thank you. That's a great story. <laughs> it has a retellable story kind of smell to it, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, cool. Okay. That was interesting. <laughs> um, um, anything else for this call? No. Stacy, any thoughts? No. <laughs> um cool i'm uh, yeah this is thank you pete yeah um a lot thank you thank you stacy yeah stop recording <laughs> uh boop. and transcript